today we are presenting uh, cases uh, from uh, our lab here in St. Mike's uh, Hospital. It's like uh, random cases, and the idea is just to discuss, uh, teach each other, and learn new uh, things and ideas. So we we'll start with the first case. So what do you think this structure is? So for each question, I will give like 20 seconds or more. 25 seconds. So what is this structure? Is it dilated coronary sinus? Is it right atrium? Is it dilated coronary artery? Is it localized pericardial effusion? Yeah. Okay, you launched the first? Yep. Oh, okay. start to have the answer. Time is done, 70%. They said it is dilated coronary sinus, and this is what I thought initially. Yeah, so yeah, sure. is it coronary sinus or not? How would you interrogate this structure? Would you do 3D? Would you do contrast or bubble, like to check what is the structure? Would you do more 2D images? Or would you refer him to cardiac CT? Because cardiac CT is the best with the anatomy. You did get it? <laughs> okay, show us the answer. I guess that's the easiest. Oh, no answer. It didn't come for us to okay. select. No. It didn't launch. Yeah, there was no poll. Yeah, okay. Now, now it will okay, come. We okay, we'll give you two seconds to answer. <laughs> you already have your time to do Oh. There's competition between B and C, either bubble study or two more to the images. So I took this case and I went to Aaron. I told her, we have a strange structure here. It is not the usual place for uh, coronary sinus, but it is there. So she took the probe and just did a sweep from the apical four all the way to the apical two. It is just the dilated right atrium sitting there. Because it is not the usual place for the uh, coronary uh, sinus to be there. And coronary artery is like, it will not be this large and compressible. Okay, it was really nice. Or you can use an explain and show it like in another, like in 90 degree and you will know where are you. I remember one of my uh, seniors used, used to say, you should be proud of your modality. You should not send the patient for another modality unless you did your best with what you have. Go echo. <laughs> Go echo. Uh, Either echo or the highway. <laughs> okay. What do you see? So this is Barston long axis with a lot of abnormalities, but what is the most striking thing? Is it a sub membrane? Is there a, a wall motion abnormality? Is there a diastolic MR? Is there abnormal aortic valve? It's all good, huh? Okay, time is up. So, what's the answer? Show me, show us the poll. Oh, there's still like MR data. Yeah, it is correct. I brought the subaortic membrane because of the false cord that it's here. It will give you the illusion that there is subaortic membrane and there is the aesthetic MR. I saw this case with Vega, if you remember. Yeah, there, this patient is having 
frequent pauses, and during the pause, the blood will pour back to the right atrium. So what are the causes? It's usually uh, significant bradycardia or low heart rate, which we, we have here in the poses, or like in two to one AV block, uh, complete heart block, or if there is high LVEDB. One of the most common example, important example is acute severe aortic regurgitation, which will cause the hysteric MR and will cause early closure, cause the all the blood will bore to the LV and back to the mitral. Okay. What is this tiny mass on the side of the LVOT or let's say the septum? So is it a thrombus? Is it a vegetation? Is it a ruptured pulse 40? Is it a ruptured mitral valve 40? Hmm? Twenty seconds. <laughs> we need more views. <laughs> it is not available for the current time. So only five answers, but one hundred percent it is. A pulse 4D, the answers. I mean. So, why it is a pulse 4D? Because of the site here. And it is linear. Always, always the patient should be taken in the clinical context. If he is coming febrile, like uh, positive blood culture, signs of uh, infective endocrine, you should rule it out. However, in day to day cases, this is like he was an outpatient uh, case, he has uh, multiple other 4Ds, you can. Yes, it is most likely ruptured part. And always they describe it as it's like thin, usually thin, but sometimes can be muscular, but unlikely to be ruptured. And it is really not the usual anatomic place for a thrombus or a vegetation. And this is the mitral will never have a cordy from the septum. Will never have. It can have a, a tertiary cordy from the posterior wall or the lateral wall, but never from the septum. And I would like to refer this article that I have read in 2018, long time ago. And it was really interesting about the types, how many types of the of the false cordy, like they give five types according to the uh, attachment, they give types according to the consistency, like what's the tissue, there is fibrous, there is muscular, there is fibromuscular, and it gives that a lot about the function of the of the pulse cordy. They, they are talking about, and until this time, there is no clear answer, but they said it may help in the remodeling, it may help in the conduction of the, uh, of the electrical activities. So this is why sometimes it will be less widening. It may help in reducing the remodeling after the ischemic attack or with the MR. So this, uh, this device was originated from that idea. Okay, what is this structure? What is the most likely finding? Is it left coronary artery, right coronary artery, anomalous? Is it artifact? Okay, we have three answers. Eight, okay. So uh, the majority are saying it is uh, right coronary artery, and this is the correct answer. Uh, usually uh, you can see the coronary arteries uh, by echo, however, it's more common in pediatric. In pediatric, they will assess the coronaries by echo. They will tell you that it is normal coronaries, they can see the origin, or there is any uh, anomaly. As you can see here, you can see the RCA, you can see the uh, left main and the bifurcation. Uh, and even if you read in the in the stress echo guideline, they some labs will pulse the left 
uh, descending artery. They will pulse it during stress. So I know, I know it's a uh, the <laughs> labs, Don't but I, I mean that, that you can see it. You can see it. By TE, we can. We can see it all. Okay, <laughs> next. This, what's the most likely finding of this aortic valve? Is it an or is it a rheumatic? Is it a bicuspid? Is it sclerotic? Is it normal? Okay. okay. So we have 50 50 that one over here. So 50% saying rheumatic, 50 saying by cusp. Now it's more uh, rheumatic. So uh, who can answer here? Hmm? By cusp? Who said by cusp? Who said rheumatic? Rheumatic. Rheumatic? Devin, your answer. Why you said rheumatic? Uh, okay. It's the central closure lines. We probably have that by cusp. So central, okay. You will not usually see the eccentric closure in the bypass. So what else? You said systolic domain. So is it only for bypass, aortic valve? No, you can see it also in the rheumatic. Yeah. So what's go in favor of rheumatic? <laughs> mitral valve. Yeah, the mitral valve will give you the hint that this is aromatic. And bicus would usually associated with dilatation and uh, other finding, but it's clearly that rheumatic. Uh, buy one, take one. <laughs> okay. Um, so, always take the hint from the other view. It's in the same view, by the way. Is it clear? So why this is rheumatic? Uh, uh, what do we say? How to describe? When, when to say it is rheumatic? Take and leaflet, okay? They still do me, okay? Okay, stick, okay, and fixed posterior. The posterior is fixed. It's not just that it is fixed. Especially if you put it in the, if you see it in the apical four chamber, it will be fixed. It's not mobile, even in the short short axis, if you bring the true uh, posterior, always look for that. You see the anterior opening and closing and the posterior is fixed as it is calcified and like fixed there. So this is uh, RV inflow. So we are showing the tricuspid. Which leaflet is this one? Okay. So, uh, can I have a side? Yes. <laughs> 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 What's the truth? <laughs> I like it. Okay. We'll just complete the 20 seconds and give the people time. So, cannot decide that I put it as a joke. Oh, what <laughs> Even people here saying that they cannot. Uh, okay. So, this is the anterior 100%. So, uh, one of the seniors used to say this is anterior, non anterior. He will end the discussion like that. So, how to say this is uh, posterior or septal? If you are seeing the septal wall, it is septal. If you are seeing also the coronary sinus, most likely it is the septal. What tell you that this is the septal, the septal leaflet, it has direct attachment to the septal wall. You can see the cordy? I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah. yeah. This, this is one of the things that you can differentiate, one of the three important or four important criteria that you can differentiate, RV from LV, that the septal leaflet has attachment to the septal. This is how can we differentiate. So this article is uh, by Rebecca Han. Uh, it's one of the greatest uh, article like describing the tricuspid valve. And for our case, it will show you here that if you see the septum and like the coronary sinus, most likely this is the septum. 
you are cutting in this direction. If you are not seeing them, most likely this is the posterior. However, this is always the anterior. So it is anterior, non-anterior, then the non-anterior, you can decide. <laughs> no, no, true, because uh, we have answers like, is it the anterior or not? Okay. <laughs> so the question is, how many millimeters do you need to diagnose prolapse, mitral valve prolapse? Ryan should not answer for sure. He's the most <laughs> expert person here in the eczematous mitral valve. So. So there is a trick here in this question. Most of the people answer it is two. So what's the answer usually? It's okay. more than two. Okay. Three. So it's three and above. Three and beyond. Yeah. So three, four, five. Okay. So okay. let's go to another question related also. How many millimeter needed to say this is a thickened valve? Yeah, I'm, sticking with yeah. I'm, never... I'm sticking with my answer. Right? I saw more than three. So none brought it here correctly, unfortunately. Uh, from the panel here, uh, three. Uh, like 40% uh, they said more than five. So it's different by literature, but they said the normal, if you go to the European, if you go to the some of the literature, it's more than, uh, the normal is three to five. For sure, it's depends on the age, the younger, the thinner. However, in adult population, they said three to five, but you never see anybody like stepping and measure it. However, when to measure it, if you need, if there is a discussion, you let the valve open, in the mid this mm -hmm. when it's like all the way opening and then you start to measure they usually they will measure the tip and the body and there is differences and regarding the mitral it's usually more than two and how to measure it it's you will create a line of the axis and whatever below or uh, uh, behind this plane more than two it will consider uh, uh, prolapse. And um, I saw this article, uh, it's talking about the mitral valve, like in general, the anatomy and uh, the thickness and everything. And it's mentioned that it's three to five. Okay. This is question nine. You should stop the previous. Is it up? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, I think I can stop it. Okay. okay. So is it a mass? Is it mechanical valve? Is it a mitral clip? Went wrong? <laughs> is it a stuck valve? A thrombus there? So it was one of the cool images that I have seen and the majority they answered correctly. It's a mechanical valve, but what type of mechanical valve? Bowling. Yes, this is the same patient. Yeah. Still I, I, still no, 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 not anymore. It's really, this is why when we see a case, we will catch it and we write the MRN and do the <laughs> images. It's not that common. Okay. What do we see here? This is an image for the mitral valve. So is it arrhythmia? Is it high LA pressure or LDDD, the, the B bump, what they call it? Is it a SAM? Is it a subaortic membrane? Because I was out of choices. 
Next. Okay, now we can both. I don't know who's choose subiotic membrane. <laughs> Either he's not listening or, <laughs> or So the majority of people said high LA pressure or LPDB. This is not the usual way of how does it present. Usually it's a small hum or they call it hum or yeah. it's just really small. This is arrhythmia. This is arrhythmia patient. If you can see, it is like fixed. There is one here and there is another here. And it's all the way like that. It's uh, I'm not sure is it this is the AA. It's like because the interval is fixed, but this patient was having arrhythmia with heart rate like of, uh, 75, and this pump keep coming. I don't think you can see the ECG here, but there is like multiple B waves there. It's okay, but anyway, the, the B bump does not come. The B bump is really small, flat, raising the pressure. So I know who did this one, but <laughs> you're like that is wrong. <laughs> yeah. This is so, giving you an option which one you like. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? Cool. Choose choose your own. Okay. What do you think the most correct one? This this uh, was after my first lecture in the the mitral uh, the the aortic dysfunction. Yeah. After the six function, and that day I saw this one. I said, "Yes, she want me. She want to give me the variety." <laughs> no, Kathy will not do that. Kathy uh, will jump off the window. <laughs> so, what do you think? Okay. The majority of answers said that none of them, which I didn't usually we take from the B to the baseline. So this one is correct. If it's done here, it would it would be also correct. Okay, it's from the B to the baseline. But um, share this on. If I do like that, share this. On. Okay. Okay. So after we finish from the deceleration time, how about the pressure half time? Which one is correct? This is not from our lab for sure. Uh, and I think we have presented this before. It's number two. Uh -huh. When I said we have presented this, she said, so it is number two. <laughs> so it could be one, it could be two, it could be three. Which one? Could be D, none of them. Yeah. Okay. All share the result. So the majority said it is two, which is the correct answer. Usually, you want to measure the STD line. Always avoid the first peak. Okay. Always avoid the first week. You want to measure the CD. This one, when you take it, it will give you false uh, and it will underestimate the stenosis. This is the true one. This is one of the like common pitfalls in mitral valve uh, stenosis. This is why also you need to make the sweep like large enough so you can see the, the signal in every way. And this is the normal uh, deceleration time. It's from the B to the baseline. Everything is fine. Next. So, if I give you this one, this image, and let's say that the left atrium is dilated, severely dilated, and the TR velocity is 
4. So what is the grade of this function for persuasion? Is it grade 1? Grade 2? Is it grade 3? Is it? I don't know. Or none of them. I don't care. Wait. But you will say it's indeterminate because it's only one single one. So? Yeah. Oh, it was. Oh, it did. People still answering. Okay. This patient is in atrial fibrillation and has a, a BBC and uh, or whatever, and she fought. I always say, say she puts the majority, so I'm the middle. So she put the feet on the middle and call it okay. This is E, this is A, acquire. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, we cannot grade the distinct structure in atrial fibrillation in base rhythm in those patients. So, um, and you will be surprised if you have the, like, this patient has complete half block and this is the A, where is the QRS, it's like at the end of the tunnel. And this is a restrictive physiology. You can see the B wave, but however, the A wave, the denoted A wave is way before that. A always look to the C. And this patient is having uh, what we call it um, a restrictive physiology. Uh, and you can see the A wave, the B wave here, and the A wave is this one. So it's really tricky. You should look to the ECG or collect it all together. Do not choose one. Um, <coughs> do not choose one signal and call it from that one. Oh, so a lot of ammo today, huh? Yeah, Doctor Howard would be proud. <laughs> so, what is the most likely diagnosis from this aortic valve? And more. Is it normal and VOT obstruction by cusp aortic valve stenosis? Only one person answered that. So, what do you think here? Bicus? Who say bicus? Who say it's normal? Who have no idea? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those are our target people, so we can... Us. Us definitely. Okay. Those are the answers. Uh, it was distributed like uh, only four we get here and bicus. Why you said bicus? Okay, one, it's eccentric. You can see the closure is here and there is a difference between the two. What else? I thought you would say it's, something else. Um, like it's not closing midway, so it cannot be obstruction. It's not obstruction, yes, I agree. It's a, before they used to diagnose aortic stenosis by M mode because they only have M mode. So they will depend how much is opening the two valves. So it's not aortic stenosis. And not, it's not aortic. Not uh, LBOT obstruction because LBOT obstruction will come as dynamic obstruction at the mid systole. You will have some interruption. There isn't subaortic membrane. Usually, will cause some significant tethering or not tethering um, uh, motion abnormality in the one of the leaflets as the jet headed. So why it is bicusp other than this one? You cannot see it by mode here, unfortunately. What is this structure from here to here? Oh, is it dilated? Dilated sinuses. Huge sinuses. See where is the leaflet and where is the sinuses? It's really huge dilated sinuses. All our images now. And Kathy specialty also. <laughs> it's not here. So what is this abnormalities? You can see a lot of uh, uh, like artifacts, or so. What do you what do you call this one? Tigers. I like tigers. 
<laughs> so you just call not because you know it, because of the appearance. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> not why not to call it zebra? <laughs> it's what? a tiger stripe. The tiger has to be white. The zebra from is Las it? Vegas. Oh, okay. If I've learned anything. It's just never D. It's never D. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a D run out of office. Well. <laughs> uh, okay. Share the result. The majority said it is tiger lines. So it has a lot of names. Oh, nice. They call it tiger lines, tiger strips, and zebra strips also. So I don't know how to share the voice from this one. Uh, this is from one of my seniors, but I have the recording here. He used to call it the seagull sign. If you hear the voice, you will never forget it. It's like, oop, 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 oop. Yeah. So strange. Ah. So what's the usually we said that ultrasound is not audible. So why do you hear that? Because the Doppler is still within the audible range. So when you do Doppler, the 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 Doppler shift is still within the audible range. So you can hear it, which is I have never I have never seen it before. It's the same. Okay. What does it mean? Oh, what does it mean? Yeah, true. I forget to add that. What does it mean? When you see this, what do you what do you think? It's common to be seen, by the way, isn't it? So usually it's seen with the rigor. It's mean that high oscillating structure. You can see that there is uh, a wire, there is a cordy vibrating or a, um, a tissue vibrating from that significant regard high velocity that it's hitting that structure okay what is this one i did the transthoracic i did the t for this patient so i know the answer now c so is it aortic stenosis so the signal is cw on the aortic lbot line isn't it so is it aortic stenosis is it Matter gear? Is it dynamic obstruction, LBOT dynamic obstruction, or is it just artifact? Like mirror artifact or whatever. Oh, sorry. Change my Okay. okay. Victor Chimel is right I don't know. So we will see the answers. Okay, the majority said it is my regurgitation. So it's not an artifact for sure. So why it is not LBOT obstruction? Mm -hmm. What the LBOT obstruction, dynamic obstruction, what's the most like characteristic things about it? Late peaking. This is why you call dagger shape. It's late peaking. It's not fast. This is not a late peak. So is it aortic stenosis? Is it mitral regression? It could be both. One of them, isn't it? Either this one or that. So what is it? Hmm? It's, uh, it's enema. Why it's enema? Um, it's because it's CW. It can touch so many clothes, right? Yeah. It's on the animal. Yeah, but why it is enema? Oh. You can see the aortic valve. So what's the difference between... This is the aortic valve, the signal of the aortic valve, CW, and this is the MR. It's more parabolic. It's more round. Yeah, it's more wide. Usually. Yeah. The MR, the aortic, the aortic valve, it is from the same patient, just for clarification, this is, this is the aortic signal, it will be from the click to the click, it will not go beyond, because it will, it will not take the isovolumetric uh, contraction and the isovolumetric relaxation, however the MR will be more broad, they come together, 
for example, this one, you can see the aortic is up to here, and this signal is like broad and coming all the way. So when we did T for this patient, this is what we found. He has a ruptured uh, player posterior with the jet coming all the way to the anterior side, to the aortic side, most likely our probe, get the signal from here and took the part of the mitral trigger. Okay, so always, always good to know how does it look like. And even if we go here, you can see the aortic. It's from here, exactly, like from the descending arm all the way to here. That's it. This is the aortic. Yazid, I'm going to make a few extra points here. Yep. Um, you know, I agree it's probably MR. It's very incomplete. So, we you know, when we think about MR signal, if you notice here, actually, this signal actually starts around the same time as the aortic signal, which, as you said, is unusual. Usually, it starts earlier. Plus, the velocities are extremely low for MR. So, either this is very, very incomplete, or the patient has a very low blood pressure or a very low systolic function. It is, it is incomplete. Because uh, in the oh, that's I'm disconnected. Still here. We can still hear you, Yazid. Uh, okay, because of the um, because of the mic is here, so okay. let me share. Yeah, no, I I agree. I, out of all the choices, it's most likely MR. I'm just saying that that there's certain aspects about the Doppler profile that doesn't fit with MR, probably because yeah, yeah. it's very, very incomplete. I agree. It is incomplete, but it's like part of the way to let them struggle. <laughs> but I, I just want to explain the idea. It's like, uh, it's incomplete, however, it's broader than the original or like the heading aortic uh, signal. And this is from a different view, the same patient, it came like really nice and uh, clear cut for the aortic signal. It's just the angle. Okay. So, what's the names of the branches? So, when I put the multiple uh, choices, I, me myself, I get confused, although I know the answer. So take your time for this one. We are in the last few questions. Any from the audience? Huh? Just want to say kudos to the sonographer who actually took the time to take this picture. This is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is really. It is drawn by hand. This one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did not say who did the mistake, but I forget who did the right. <laughs> no, usually I save the images. Okay. Let's end the poll and let's share the result. Can you show us? Okay, the majority get it right. It's the brachiocephalic, left carotid, and then left uh, subclavian. Also, commonly, you will see some flow here. It is the brachiocephalic pain. It's really tricky, that one. So this is from the uh, 2015 guidelines. Uh, it's the pneumonia, left common, and brachiocephalic. It's difficult to name it if you see only one or two. Sometimes it's difficult. I know in pediatric, it's easy. You can decide a lot. But in adults, uh, if, if you don't see it as clear as this, it's extremely difficult to say which artery. Okay, this is, we have only 20 questions. This is the 19. <laughs> Almost there. So this is an mode for the aortic valve. What do you see? Is it a low cardiac output? Is there a SAM? Is there a subaortic membrane? Is it a normal mode? D when I'm out of choices. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and still people are choosing D. 
<laughs> okay. Any idea from who? Any suggestion? So what do you see? Usually, it will open char and close char. How about this one? It's opening char, then tapering down. So low cardiac output. This is the low cardiac output. It's, you can see it from time to time, and it's really nice sign to be seen. Last question. Stop. Okay, so this is a trans thoracic signal. And what do you think? Is it a pulmonary embolism? Is it a great three diastolic dysfunction? Is it outflow dynamic obstruction or a pulmonary hypertension? Is the third child writing? I don't know. So the answer is this is a sign of pulmonary hypertension. It's in that. So this is why I said that transthoracic because it's the outflow. And if you can see it's between the clicks, so most likely it's semilunar valve. And you have short acceleration time with mid systolic notch, which is most commonly come with the pulmonary hypertension. I know I did not bring a lot of, of images. You said I should show you this or that, but it is how to make the quiz, to make other people's life difficult and to get some interaction. It's like I can make that two in one note. Uh, okay, the majority they get it right. And it with that, hmm? that was the first real deep. The first real deep. Yeah, oh, thank you. So with that, we conclude. Uh -huh. And space, what does it say? You should answer this one. It's saying thank you. <laughs> Isn't it? I feel it's saying thank you. Oh, kind of it. <laughs> yeah, I saw it like a long time. OK, thank you, everybody, for coming and uh, participating. Thank you, Ryan, for the helping. You saved my life today. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. That was a great okay. set of rams. Stump the experts. Well done. <laughs>